Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about Married at First Sight Australia's final, final vows. All right, so today we had another three couples. We concluded Jack and Tori's final vows. We got Jada and Eden's final vows and we got Tim and Sarah's final vows. Now let's just get into it because today's episode was so much better and so much more juicy than yesterday's. Now, first off, let's get the boring couple out of the way, Jaden and Eden. Now Jaden and Eden, we pretty much knew they were gonna say yes. Jaden love bombed the shit out of Eden like a few episodes ago. So it felt like he was very much going to say yes, obviously. To me, it felt like Eden was probably feeling a little bit stuck. Like Jaden has shown some serious red flags. Uh, he's a bit emotionally unaware. He's a bit dim. And also uh, he has a habit of fucking people's best friends to get back at them. So I'm just wondering if she's sitting there kind of going, hmm, is this the guy I want to commit my life to and have children with? She does talk to the camera about like, I do love him, but I don't know if he's my forever person. And it's like, yeah, there are probably a few things he's exhibited that aren't forever partner qualities. I'm going to sleep with her best friend while she watches, I don't regret it. However, these clearly aren't enough to throw her completely because they both say yes to each other. So they are going to continue their relationship outside of this experiment. I know I seem like I've been a bit harsh on Jaden recently. I really liked Jaden up until he started talking to Mitch. I want to address the doubts, fix it so that me and Eden will stay strong for, for a long time. Yeah, really that's a hard, that's a hard position to be in. Yeah. Uh, ever since then, I've got the ick. He showed a level of like lack of emotional intelligence and just putting everything on his wife that really didn't sit well for me. I don't think the way he handles arguments or the way he like poorly communicates is intentional either, but it is something he needs to work on. All right, so next we have Tim and Sarah. Uh, obviously, Sarah has been an absolute nightmare to Tim. And Tim is one of the most like classically handsome, uh, emotionally well composed, just like appealing husbands on the show. He'd be way better suited to someone like Cassandra, but whatever. He's been paired up with Sarah, a complete battle axe of a woman, right? Her argument style is an argument. Arguing. Her argument style is literally trying to emotionally murder and traumatize someone. Can I just say, you guys are questioning my morals and my character, but how many of you at this table have cheated on a partner? Raise your and she had that whole thing where she cheated on Tim with her ex, which weirdly enough, I have to agree with her, has made them a better couple. I, I know. I know it's it's a bad thing to say, but they have been noticeably more locked in. Maybe that guilt is what she needed. Like maybe Tim having something over her to rein her in is what was needed. I'm not saying that's good. Like that's not a good relationship, all right? But I'm saying from what we've seen, uh, when she says like, weirdly enough, it brought us closer. I'm like, Fuck, I have to agree. Like, I do have to agree. So regardless, the big arc for this couple is, will Tim say yes after everything Sarah has put him through? And I like it because up until this point, they've been great, right? Like ever since the cheating, every single time we see them, they're loved up, they're working as a team. And then randomly the producer's like, no, actually he's really, really struggling. And you know, so you're seeing they're going like, oh, how are they gonna communicate this? And it's so funny. This season has had a few of these moments. Uh, they tried to visualize Eden's anxiety earlier on in the show, but they do this thing where they start making it like an actual TV show. They start having these dramatic flashbacks and these musical stings being like, oh my God, it's Tim's PTSD from Sarah. Don't take things so personally. There's this great moment where he says bye to Sarah. She's gained an Uber. By the way, I forgot to mention in earlier episodes, there's this great moment uh, where Sarah goes to Tim, hey, can you order an Uber? And he goes, yeah, let me just order the Uber through the Uber app. And then it like zooms in on the phone and they have this really like basically an Uber commercial. It's hilarious. Like, is that how normal people talk? Like, hey babe, can you order dinner? Yeah, le yeah, yeah. Let me, let me order dinner through the menu log app. Does the cameraman see me ordering through the menu log app? She gets in an Uber, right? And he's sitting there just like watching her leave. He walked her to the door, which like, gentlemen, what a king. But yeah, he walks her to the car, she drives off. And then we get this amazing shot where clearly the cameraman was like, okay, hold, hold. Yep, 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 stay there, like see her off. Uh, and they've taken that footage of him basically just standing there with his thumb up his ass and added this like numb flashback level thing. So it's like all these moments of like Sarah yelling in his ear and calling him small and like, you know, defending herself cheating and just being like an awful person, like numb flashbacks just constantly. Don't take things so personally. I haven't given you a reason not to trust me. Tell Tim what you did. I met up with my ex. Cheater on me, it's on the weekend. Don't you ever yell at me. 
And I guess it makes me laugh because there's like a really good chance he's probably just seen that going, hmm, should I get KFC or McDonald's on the way home tonight? You know what I mean? Like he probably wasn't even thinking that and they're just seen there like, hold, hold, yes, this is great drama. So anyway, so Tim and Sarah get to the final vows. Sarah says yes, because she'd be stupid fucking not to. I mean, look at Tim. How could you say no to that? But Tim gets up and Tim basically does the push bull love bomb dynamic like seven times. I did not know Tim had this level of like psychological, like emotional manipulation in him. Like he literally starts going like, Sarah, when I got paired with you, it was like a fairy tale. You were like the best. I was so excited, but then problems arose. Our communication styles did not work. We were not working together. It was really bad. And like, this is typical, right? Like in Merit of First Sight, they need to create drama. So every single time someone does the final vows, very typically, aside from like Ridge, uh, they'll be like, we've had our ups and downs. There were moments where I thought we couldn't do this, but I want to do it with you forever. Um, so this is very standard, right? You're like, okay, he's going to highlight a few not great moments and then swing back around into marriage. And so he starts swinging back around. He starts going like, but anyways, I want to work it out. And you're like, cool. Okay. So he's going to say yes. But then he goes, you slept with my ex. And that was really hard. And then the communication styles after and the arguments, I just thought I could never work through. He does this like four times. This like up and down. This like yes and no. Until she's like sitting there. And I think she actually like checked out of the fucking speech. Like at first she was smiling and she was like, oh yeah, that's a bit of shame. Like, I'm sorry we had our bad moments. By the end of it, you can tell she's sitting there like, fuck me. Like, if you don't like me this much, I don't want to marry you it's such a funny moment but regardless he brings it all back with a booty joke he ends up being like oh you know i i, I want to say yes to you every day and that amazing booty so they're riding off into the sunset but we finally get to the last couple if you thought tim's speech was a little up down sideways brace yourself for jack's speech so what i thought was going to happen with jack's speech was because we saw in the previews this whole quote of like how could i commit to someone i'm not feeling 100 percent about i thought he was then going to like wrap it around i thought he was going to wrap it around and be like but I feel 110% for you, baby. But holy fuck, Jack's speech was like new levels of Married at First Sight unhinged. Now, look, I haven't been on the Jack and Tori hate train as much as other people. They're not a good couple. They're not even good people. Like, I actually think they're soul sucking succubuses. But in terms of like a union, uh, I think they work well as a team. On top of that, every single dinner party, uh, people were coming at them. And I started to agree with Tori being like, can you guys back the fuck off? Like I, I agree with Tori. I don't know if that's like a hot take or not, but like I got it. After a while I was like, you know what? They both like each other, back out of it. But this is probably the worst Jack has been. This speech was evil. So he starts going and he's basically like, yeah, you know, you were really cool. We're both dominant alphas. And I'm like, oh my God, cringe. Cringe, 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 cringe. What's that? What's that, brother? Uh, he goes on and on and on. And eventually, eventually he starts going like, but we worked well as teammates. I think what happened is the experiment brought us closer together because people were really coming at us and we worked well as a team to defend each other. But as lovers, as partners, we are not good. I'm concerned that our biggest connecting factor may have been the brutal environment of the experiment, where our loyal personalities bonded over having each other's back and picking each other up when need be, like teammates. Not lovers. He then proceeds to say, we are not in love. After she's given a speech basically going like, I love you, I wanna spend the rest of my life with you, I am falling in love with you, he goes, we're not in love. We are not in love. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck, dude? We are not in love. So how can I commit to you and ask you to uproot and move your life to the Gold Coast? Like speak for yourself, Jack. But regardless, he goes, we are not in love. Uh, we actually only operate as teammates. It's like, Everyone likes seeing each other as teammates in romantic relationships. That's kind of like the idea, like your teammates in life. But Jack's like, nah, we're teammates. We feel like sport partners. Uh, we are not in love. How could I possibly commit to you? Like he just goes and goes and goes. Tori is like upset. It cuts a break where he says, I cannot commit to you. I'm sorry. My jaw was on the floor. I was like, holy fuck. Like he's actually rejecting this girl that has stood by him and been his complete ride or die. Like that's it. And then somehow it comes back after the ad break and he goes, but I want to try. And he tries to turn around. He like weasels his way back and starts going like, yep, we're going to make it work, baby. You and me. Moving forward with you is a massive risk. And it's a risk I'm 100% ready to take.
Uh, it was the weirdest speech. I, I cannot, em like you need to watch the whole speech. Find the YouTube video uh, on the Married at First Sight channel, but you need to watch the full speech because he literally spends two minutes of like a three minute speech basically roasting Tori for who she is. He essentially attacks her character for sticking up for him. It is strange. However, while we're on this topic, I want to talk about Tori's speech too, because she kind of highlights like, oh, Jack, you've been really difficult and I've had to defend you and you've had some really shitty actions. I reckon she is saying that just to save face. I think she likes everything he's done. I don't think she cares. You need to remember when she got in the commitment ceremony that time and said, yeah, that muzzle your woman comment isn't indicative of who Jack really is. He was just worked up. Like, I don't think she actually thinks Jack is that bad at all. That's why she likes him. And I I think she's just like pretending to have issues just for camera, just for show. But on top of that, she had a really cringe moment in her speech where she talked about like, oh, like I finally found my match. And I'm like, okay, okay. Like she's sitting there like, oh, I was a really dominant personality. And then I found someone who, who was as dominant and as alpha as me. And I'm like, Ugh. even worse than that is her speech basically turns into, I love you. I want to spend as much time as possible with you as I possibly can. And Jack's sitting there with his smug look like, yeah, 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 that's a good woman. Yeah, you're saying all the right things. You're hearing all the right notes that a speech like this should be hitting. And although I am giving up being close to family in a city I love for you is a sacrifice I'm willing to take. You are my equal, my soulmate. And I don't say this lightly, but it's safe to say that I am falling in love with you. And then afterwards, he literally goes, wow, well done. That's all you have to say? I genuinely think he was sitting there enjoying her like being scared that he was gonna say no. Like, that's what it is. Like, there's no way he's actually intelligent enough to be like, oh, this is going to be great for the ratings. I'm going to be the amazing villain. Everyone's going to want a piece of me. Like, I genuinely think he just enjoys keeping her on her toes a little and being like, I don't know if I feel about you. Uh, this was strange, but way better episode than yesterday. And oh my God, before I let you go, the preview for the reunion dinner party and the reunion commitment ceremony looks absolutely insane. Looks absolutely insane. Sarah's yelling at Tim, who would have thunk it? Um, Cassandra's yelling at someone, I hope it's Tori. Uh, Jono and Lauren are going at it. Shit face, I'm talking. You're such a liar. I cannot wait. Also, Jono shows up with Ellie. Let's go. Uh, why would they spoil that? But like, whatever. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. Uh, please subscribe. I've got videos on literally every single episode of Married at First Sight this season. So please, please check those out. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and check out my TikTok. It's basically these videos, but a bit more like chill, more personality, I guess, and um, shorter. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Uh, all my socials are in my bio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.